Hello, YouTube. There's an incredible rally underway, and it tells us that if we can continue, Santa Claus is going to come to town because the last time we rallied by 45%. Jerome Powell came in and he delivered. He was Santa Claus today. So what exactly did he tell us? We got these dots. It's called the dot plot. We got these numbers, and then he talked. Stocks went up. We're going to talk about exactly the reasons why that happened, but I'm giving you the highlighted number right here. It's the federal funds rate where it went from 4.6, sorry, from 5.1, 5.1 to 4.6 and 3.9 to 3.6. All that means is that the Fed is going to be actu actually cutting interest rates next year. So what does that mean? Hey, it's a bull party. Everything is higher. Uh, we note that if we look at the one day or the one week, there is breadth, there is depth. So we had the interest rate decision where they did nothing, but it's the meeting associated with an SEP, which is what I keep mentioning. So that's the dots we just looked at. Stock said, hey, it's time to buy. It's time to go up. And I want to leave you, I want to look at a quote here from Warren Buffett. This guy's a little bit smarter than me. He tells us that the stock market is a device for transferring money from the impatient to the patient. So what does that mean? I'll make it so dead simple for you because we've been talking about a bear trap and I'll talk about that in a second. But um, what I want to do here is actually go back to the simple pattern where if you're patient and just wait until the pattern breaks, you might make a lot of money. Low, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low. Okay. And I talked about how we're looking at Bitcoin as our template. Low, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low. Man, it's been like 10 weeks in a row. Yes. So what does that mean? Have the patience to wait until the pattern breaks. Otherwise, cut your, cut your losers fast and let your winners run. That seems so simple. And right now, when stocks are pretty cheap, if we're being mindful of multiples for the Dow, it's, a, it's basically in line with where it was 10 years ago. S&P, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's not egregious. It's not uh, super high. NASDAQ is overpriced a little bit. The Russell 2000 is cheap. What does that mean? Stocks should go up. And here's the most interesting part is that it actually worked. We told you 10 days ago to look for the bear trap. That's the monthly chart. This one pattern we're looking at right now. So let's go back to look at it right now. Why? It's so simple, but you're going to have to be patient to wait for it. Let's look here. After we break over, we go basically up for a year. And it's a relentless move higher. We do that for a year. It's 45% higher. If we now pop over here to SPX, I have the numbers uh, actually calculated here. So we talked about how if it's 2020 and we're going to be going higher, uh, this is another one we were looking at. What was, what was my target? 5,600. Oh my goodness. That's like a lot higher, Justin. Yes, it is. Stocks could be going dramatically higher. So we held the monthly pattern. And uh, Jerome pretty much came in today and took a victory lap. That's how I'm interpreting what he said. All right, before we go further, I'm going to ask you guys for a huge, huge favor. If you could consider smashing the thumbs up and subscribing to the channel, we do publish stock market videos every single day. And I stream every single weekday from 9.15 a.m. I look forward to seeing you there. Um, so these dots, what exactly does it mean? Because before we look further, we just want to understand what actually moved the market. Well, um, we talked about uh, how the Fed was wrong about everything. GDP, unemployment, inflation. Well, you can see the big change here. From September until today, only three months ago, uh, they're wrong, wrong, wrong. Notably on PCE and on uh, GDP. Here on the Fed funds rate, they're basically conceding. No change to 26. This is kind of uh, whatever, right? 2023 is not this year. It's next year. So now the Fed has confirmed or endorsed the stock rally. He's basically saying buy stocks. That's what I heard Jerome Powell say today. Is it going to be right or wrong? And I don't know. I'm just here to make a buck. All right. I'm a simple guy trying to follow a simple story. And the story from 10 days ago was that watch this one pattern. It's a bear trap. Then what happened? Well, ouch. Ready for the move lower. Oh my God. Gapping crap. And then what happened? Flip. Boom. 5,200. Risk on, baby. Whoop. So all the warning signs were there. What we talked about was that we might get enough of a move lower to trap the bears for them to come in and get sucked into the trap. And then what happens? Man, Bearfield rally. Let's go. Is there evidence? Yes, there is. Let's look here. So here we're looking at the CFTC net short uh, net short positions for the uh, S&P futures. And we know one thing here, man, they've been short for a long time. Haven't managed to make money though. So short, double down. Then they briefly go net long, right? There's the trap. They come back in. Oh yeah, time to short, time to short, time to short. And they're the ones fueling this rally. Thanks guys. Really appreciate it. And finally, retail actually wins. This is a historic move from the Fed. Uh, let me just click here. I'll click on up. I'm on a different channel. I'm logged in. What does it say? Man, next week we're going to be up. 60% of people were correct this week. Congratulations, Bulls. You guys earned it. 
And now we note that stocks are hitting record highs. Apple has a record close with big tech rally. Whoa, right? Three trillion market cap. That's a big dog. That is a big dog. So here's the dot plot. Here's the things the Fed tells you. I just told you why it matters in about five minutes. What I'm going to do now is tell you what could happen from here. Because if Jerome Powell just told us that, um, hey, uh, risk on, right? Baby, let's go. Um, how high could we go? Well, that's that's what we're looking at here. So right now I'm looking for a potential of 45%, but we're going to take it one candle at a time. So now I'm going to give you a little bit of a template, but make sure you watch until the end because I will leave you with leave you with, us, with some insight that we talked about from Warren Buffett because what we're looking at here, I'll actually tell you the right now what that, uh, that thing is. So let's look at that Warren Buffett quote again. Uh, where is it? Uh, here it is. So here's the Warren Buffett quote. Um, I'll actually pull it over so it's a little bit easier to read um, because I want you to pay attention to this. If the pattern on the weekly chart progresses to the monthly chart, man, we're going to make so much money. There's going to be so many gains. And I think what people have a hard time understanding is this. I tweeted it earlier, so or I X'd it. I'm not sure how to say that. I put it out on the X. So what I posted was this. I said, um, the stock market is not the economy. So I'm like, man, when I look around, I don't see an all-time high economy. I'm seeing an economy that kind of stinks. And people agree. Uh, it's not a lot of votes. Uh, but if you want to follow me, here's my handle. It's uh, just my name. Um, the economy is not the stock market, and the stock market is not the economy. So what does that mean? Hey, if we're pointing up, um, let's make money. We talked about this on the stream this morning, where team probability and team risk reward are both bullish over 461. Where do we go? Man, straight to 470. Nice. Um, so now we're going to look at the, the quote. The stock market is a device for transferring money from the impatient to the patient. Pay attention to this. Because I've been hearing a lot of people really butthurt about not being in the rally, right? Oh my God, I hate this rally. Can we finally just go down? And here's another piece of evidence I've been looking for. Fear and greed, I just checked it, um, is now at 69. I said I want 70. Man, we're awfully close to 70. Can I get a 70? Please and thanks. Um, that would make me quite happy because now we actually have room to go into extreme greed, which means what? Man, another blow off top, baby. Let's go. Let's blow the top off, right? Let's go. 5,600. Let's do it. Let's go up. Um, what that would mean is a lot more upside. And uh, we're taking the rocket ship up, so we could definitely take the elevator down. But now let's pay attention to this pattern here. We're noted, What I'm telling you here is that I'm looking at this box. Now I'm going to delete everything to make it really simple for you. We have this pattern where we break out to a new high. We have a pattern forming, which breaks out to a new high, but not an all-time high. So as we're approaching 480, which will be our last stop, look what happens here. We go up for one month, right? The next month we get indigestion. So what would that mean? If we close out December here, we get indigestion in January. That would make sense. We should test our all-time high. And then we just go straight up. Whether or not people agree that the market was overvalued, undervalued, we went up by 45%. And here's the pattern. Pay attention, please. All right. Low, higher, 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 low. Oh. So it was like easy between the higher low forming until we form a lower low. Yep, that's it. That's the pattern. That's the video. I could be done right now, but let's go back and look here. Why? Because you're like, that doesn't happen. Well, it does. It can happen nonstop. Let's look here. Low, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low. Oh, yeah. What does that mean? Defense. So if the default chart is currently bullish because we're breaking out and we're over resistance, what do we look for from the winning team? We look for defense. That is a higher low. By closing over the previous candle high, that is offense or the bulls advancing or charging. There's another way we can look at this because we've been showing you more than one way over the last couple of months about different ways we can try to slice the data. Here we showed you that um, we have a fail breakdown, which is a bottoming pattern. And then closing over the previous candle high is an expansionary signal. Well, that was a trap, right? Boom, trap, we go lower, then we ultimately rallied. There's a lot of different ways we can look at this. What I'm trying to just show you is that if you're like, oh my God, there's no way that we're going to go up for like 10 months in a row. The economy is tanking, Justin, didn't you see? Yes, trust me, I see. But when I look at the pattern, as long as the higher lows hold, which have already happened back to 2020, if they continue to happen here, we're only three candles in. They can definitely go higher for a lot longer. It happened here on the weekly chart where we just couldn't continue to go higher and higher and higher. I'll show you one more reason why this might be the pattern we're looking for. As I mentioned, if this tracks, that'll be roughly January. We're likely going to have to test our all-time high here. Hit it, indigestion, right? Just like Thanksgiving. Before you eat the pie, maybe sometimes you have to unbuckle your belt. 
So that's what we're watching for. And the reason why this is so notable is because XLK has already made a new all-time high. We talked about Apple, and Apple and Microsoft are half of this uh, this ETF, XLK, which is tech. So what happened? Man, same thing. Indigestion, cup and handle, boom, new all-time high, record. We look at, uh, so tech is up. Semiconductors, oh my goodness, roughly the same pattern. Cup, handle, boom, new highs, boom, bullish. Oh my God, is that is that all we're looking for? Yeah. If chips lead tech and tech leads spy, we just want to make sure we form a cup with some kind of handle, and then boom, we go to new highs, maybe after a little bit of indigestion. And what I'm just telling you was what Jerome basically told us today. Jerome said, hey, time to go risk on. So I'm not here to fight with him. I'm here to, I'm here to say that if that's what the man says, that's what the man says. He controls the money printer, and it's not my job to tell him what he should be doing. It's my job to make money, place orders, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to place bullish orders because that's what this guy told me to do. He said, bears are wrong, right? Bears lose, right? Sorry, guys, you lose. Um, and the uh, the quote I forgot to mention that I was going to say at the very beginning of the video was this. Being early is just like being wrong. So if fundamentally you're like, oh my God, the economy. Yes, trust me. I know the economy looks terrible. To me, it looks it looks like it's, it's about to fall over. Right, it doesn't matter for me. For, it doesn't matter for right now. Why? Because we make money based on what the chart does, not on what should happen. We we get we get paid based on what does happen, what is happening. And um, people who are usually very bearish, they're usually right, but they usually call multiple recessions before they're ultimately right. What does that mean? It means that if you are early on the bearish move, it's just like being wrong. All those shorts we just reviewed, man, they lost so much money. Between 400 and 4, 4, uh, 470, that's almost a 20% rally. That's almost a bull market. From 400 to 480, that's a bull market. Bull move. Two years worth of gains. And that's happened in like two months. Oh my goodness, really? Yes. But they keep saying, oh my God, the economy. Oh my God, this. Oh my God, that. And if we break, if we break, if we form a lower low like we did over here, I'll tell you where the warning sign is going to come. The warning sign does not mean that's the bottom. It doesn't mean that's where the top is. It just means now the pattern that has been re reliable up until now is breaking. Low, higher, 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 low. Then we get a bearish engulfing right here. Ultimately, we get a dead, uh, sorry, we get another uh, blow off. Then we get the move lower. But right here, you definitely got a warning. Here we're going up. Here we're going sideways. It's pretty easy to see. Here we're going sideways. And here we're going down. Oops, let's delete everything. So up, sideways, down. After we stop going up, it seems so simple. After we stop going up, we can start going sideways. Once we start going sideways, there's potential we can go down. High, lower, high, lower, high. Oh, that's it? Yeah, that's it. I know it sounds so simple, but that's all we're looking for. So until we break our uptrend and or we lose and form a monthly lower low, man, it's time to rally. It's time to go up. Stop fighting it. So what I'm going to do now is leave you with a video that is our weekend review. If you want to see more, more notes about how exactly I thought we would get here. And if not, subscribe to the channel. I'd really encourage you to do that. I will be live tomorrow at 9, 9.15 Eastern to walk you through the market open. Thank you very much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.